Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Everton show. Well, you may remember last week we heard from our new boy Jenk Tosin. This week we're hearing from our newest new boy Theo Walcott who joined the club from Arsenal earlier this week. Alongside me in the studio down here at USM Finch Farm this week is Ian Snowden. We were just talking off camera how good a signing Theo Walcott is. I'm delighted Daz, I really am. 28 year old, mm. uh, established uh, England international, plenty of pace scores goals uh, I'm not complaining I'm delighted and uh, I hope he's uh, in the starting line upon Saturday he scores them snods and he creates them as well yes he does uh, he's not prolific at scoring probably that's one of his uh, downfalls over the years but he does create because he's got electric pace and uh, he delivers great balls into the box so whether he's going to play out wide for us on the right hand side or whether he's going to be uh, used as a two up front uh, time will tell but I'm, I'm absolutely delighted with the sign. Theo Walcott's been around for eight, eight mm. seems ages. He went to the World Cup when he was a youngster as well. So, uh, yeah, when, when I knew that we were in for him, I'm thinking, yeah, let's get this one over the line because he'll be a great acquisition, I think, for our club. And there were other clubs interested in Theo Walcott. He had a big decision to make and he chose Everton. Does that ring a bell? That's <laughs> what, who else could he choose? Who in? else could he choose? <laughs> I had I had that choice as well, but uh, no, he, he's made the right choice, and it was great to see him yesterday getting interviewed with the Everton badge mm. on as well, and he looked as though he was really happy to be here as well, and and I'm sure he can't wait to get started. If it's Saturday, I'm sure it'll be Saturday. Um, the fans will be in for a treat, hopefully. And the boss clearly rates him because when. Big Sam was in charge of England for that game. He called Theo back into the squad. Yeah, and he, he, he's not made many signings since he's been here, Sam. He's only made the one, and uh, this is his second one. So, uh, yeah, he does rate Theo very highly. Uh, he was the England manager when he called him up as well. So, uh, yeah, you can see that Sam's enthusiastic about this signing and Theo's enthusiastic about joining Everton Football Club. And we're enthusiastic to have him. Let's learn a little bit more about Theo Walcott and hear from the man himself. like the club was you know on the up uh, I felt that with the manager seems to get the best out of players especially when first coming in um, and just the plans for the future of the club and I felt like I want to be part of that it was um, obviously a very difficult decision but I just felt it was the right one at this moment in time you know obviously I have a young family as well that I need to take into account um, but you know being still only 28 I feel fit as I ever have done um, and I just want to be playing football and working hard and you know, making this club be where I think I believe it can be. You know, like I say, with the development of the stadium, the plans, the players coming in, I felt like I want to be part of something, part of something that's, you know, going forward. Um, and, you know, like I said before, getting a chance to work with the manager again, I know I had that brief spell and I've just, I've really enjoyed it and I want to be part of that. Uh, and that belief the manager had bringing me in here, yeah, um, you know, it made my decision very easy. The support I've had here, it's been so good. You know, everyone's been so good to me straight away and so nice. And um, even you know, all the messages I've had from, you know, the Arsenal fans and particularly, you know, obviously being there for 12 years, it was, um, 
you know, it was massive for me. Uh, it was quite emotional. Uh, and the reception I've had from Everton fans, and I'm obviously really looking forward to going to Goodison Park. It's got a lot of history. It's a, it's a great football club. It's, like I say, that's why I want to be part of it. I think there'll be so much excitement ahead of the game on Saturday, Snods, because all of a sudden now we've got a real attacking threat with Tosin and Walcott. And no disrespect to the lads who have been there all season, who have done well, but they've got a bit of experience about them, a bit of pace and a bit of know-how. Yeah, and hopefully goals. That's, yeah. what, that's what we've been missing most of the season, uh, an attacking threat, a threat to get in the 18-yard in the box and, and, and shoot on target. Uh, the lack of goals has, has been a concern. So hopefully now we've got a couple of players in here that will have the ability to score goals. But let's not f forget Yannick Balassi. He's getting mm. better with every game, getting fitter as well. Uh, we've, got, we've got good options. Um, Sigurdsson as well, I'm sure he'll be, he'll be enthusiastic of the signings of Theo and uh, Tosin as well. So, uh, well, it boosted the whole dressing room. Yeah, it does. It does. When a, when a new player comes in, uh, the banter's good. You, you get to know the, the person really quickly as well. So it does. It gives you a, a little boost. And we need a boost. Mm. We, we, we really did. Uh, things have not gone well for us recently. The results, a bad result at Spurs. But let's forget about that. This is a big, big game uh, against West Bromwich Albion on, on Saturday. And... Theo Walcott coming in, uh, home debut as well for Jenk Tosin. So uh, the fans have got a lot to look forward to and let's hope they're excited and let's hope that everybody goes away happy come uh, after the 90 minutes. Like you said earlier, Snods, Theo Walcott seems to have been around for an awful long time. Mm. How important is it to bring a player in who's already got that Premier League know-how, a little bit of savvy about him? Yeah, you get on about Wayne Rooney. Um, being experienced and being able to tell the young lads what to do. This lad is as experienced as Wayne, mm. to be quite honest. Mm. He's, he's been there, he's been playing Premier League football since he was 16, 17 year old. He's been a great club at Arsenal with good players around him that he'll have sure learnt plenty of things off them as well. Uh, so yeah, he, he's an experienced player, but when you look at his, his career, he's not played that many games, so he's not over the hill, as they say, mm. at 28. And you can tell with, with the way he plays, the pace he plays at, his enthusiasm, he's got a lot to offer. If you've been training week in, week out with Robin Van Persie, mm. Thierry Henry, some of that's oh, got to rub off, got hasn't to, it? You've got to learn it. Same as our boys who, who, who are training with Wayne Rooney, week in and week out, the young lads there. Yeah, you, you're bound to learn. It's like when I came from Leeds, I was only 23, but then to see Peter Reid, your Kevin Ratcliffe's and uh, Sharpies, etc., you learn every day and it's great. Well, we're delighted to have Theo Walcott on board. I'm sure the supporters are as well. And so is the manager. This is Sam Allardyce. If he repeats what he did, even this year with his short appearances, <laughs> he's got goals. And, uh, and last year's appearances, he's, he's, he's exceptionally good from a player from a wide position. Um, may, have, may occasionally have played up front, but... For us, that's a, a very important ingredient where we are short in, in terms of creating and scoring goals at the moment, and it adds great firepower, to, hopefully, to our squad. The experience of the Premier League, he's seen it all. He, he, you know, in, at this league, unlike Jenk, who's only just getting here, which may be more difficult for him. So we, uh, there's a settling in period for everybody, whether you move in this country, you know, whether you move from abroad and hopefully settles very quickly and enjoys his time here and uh, we're here to support him, all the staff are here to support him to achieve as much as he possibly can while he's with us. That was Big Sam there, Snods, a man you know very well and the game against West Bromwich Albion will be his 1000th game as a manager in English football. He must have done something right. <laughs> yeah, he has and uh, he's, got a, he's got a great reputation off other managers as well, um, I know. Sir Alex Ferguson, uh, he's big pals with him. Peter Reid speaks so highly of Sam as well. I've been in his company once or twice as well. And uh, yeah, he knows how to enjoy himself. But I tell you what, he knows how to get a team to win a game of, game of football. And uh, it hasn't gone right recently in, in the last couple of weeks. And uh, let's start on, on Saturday. Let's get back to winning ways. And I'm, I'm sure Sam will be well up for it. And he'll... And he, He'll stipulate to the players what a big game this is mm. and get the crowd on your side early doors. Sam will only celebrate his 1,000th game afterwards and only if we've got a good result, I would imagine. Yeah, and rightly so. I don't think it'll mean anything to him if we, uh, if we get beat, I think. Uh, but let's not look like that. Let's look and let Sam enjoy his 1,000th game 
um, because we're going to win this game. There's no question <laughs> about it. I'm confident. I'm sure all the players are confident. He's been great around the place. Yeah, he, he has. He, he's, uh, and little Sammy Lee as well. Yeah. Let's not forget uh, Sammy Lee. He's enthusiastic. The pair of them have brought a smile back to Finch Farm. And uh, you can tell when you walk in the door, everybody, everybody's enthusiastic, smiling. Now, we just need to hmm. step up a little bit and get a run of games, winning games under his belt. Well, that's just about it for part one of this week's Everton show. Coming up in part two, we'll be joined in the studio by Everton ladies manager Andy Spence, and we'll also speak in English to Jen Tosin. Welcome back to part two of this week's Everton show. I'm with Ian Snowden here at USM Finch Farm. You've already used the phrase big game. West Bromwich Albion at Goodison Park. Ahead of a break next week and forced because of the FA Cup. Mm. We need a win on Saturday, don't we? We do need a win. It won't be easy. Uh, I think we were quite fortunate to get a point down at uh, the Hawthorns mm. there. I really did because uh, they put some decent deliveries in first half, set plays, and I thought we were quite fortunate to go in nil-nil. Didn't really have a chance until the 89th minute when the ass had a, had a chance, mm. created a chance for himself. Uh, but we came away with a point. Again, uh, not give anything away, uh, clean sheet, which Sam will have been delighted, the back four would have been, and, and Jordan Pickford. But we're at home, we've got to take the game to West Brom. They're down there for a reason. All right, they picked up, they've won a couple of uh, games recently, 2-0 against Brighton, but a, a decent result. Uh, Are you surprised to see them down there, given they finished 10th last season? In a way, I am, yeah. Um, in a way that I didn't think Tony Pulis would, be, mm. would not be at... Uh, West Brom as well so things have, haven't been going right from this season Daz. so they're down there for a reason the confidence has been low same as I was a few months ago um, but we're at Goodison we've got the Goodison crowd behind us we've got one hopefully two players making their own debuts mm. uh, so there's a lot of excitement on Saturday so a lot of expectation yeah well. we've not got to let that crowd down we really haven't from that first whistle let's get after them let's close them down let's get shots on target uh, on target, sorry. Uh, let's get balls into the box. Let's make things happen. Let's get the crowd behind you. That's what you need at Goodison. And I'm convinced, honestly, if we start well, we'll win the game. Mm. West Bromwich Albion's nods, just to train, change track slightly, have been mm. in the news this week for all the wrong reasons with the passing of Cyril Regis, mm. a man who you came to know. Yeah, I did. Uh, he was a great man. Um, Graham Stewart let me know, actually. He rang me on Monday. It took a lot to sink in. It really did because he was only 59. He was still fit, still yeah. going to the gym, but what a great, great fella, not only on the pitch for his, for his uh, colleagues, but off the pitch as well. That's where I respected him more. On the pitch, he was a great player, strong. I didn't like playing against him. <laughs> Played centre-half against him for, uh, for Everton against Coventry. Big, powerful, caused you all kinds of problems. But see, off the pitch, as the first time I played against him, he went straight into the players' lounge and you were talking away. He comes straight over, shook, he introduced himself because he didn't really know me. And then over the years, I got to know him and pff, he, he was a great, great fella. And everybody that's saying the bit about him, they are genuinely, mm. genuinely... Uh, saying the right things about him because he was a fantastic man. And I'm sure both sets of fans will show their respects on Saturday. Home debut, as you say, for Jen Tosin. How do you think his actual debut went against I Tottenham thought, at Wembley? I, I thought he did all right. I really did, especially first half. I thought the team did all right first half. Uh, but what, what excited me is link-up play, held-up mm. play, and he brought midfield players into it as well. I think we, we're going to see a good player in I think uh, the supporters are happy to have him around, aren't they? Well, mm. Jen Tosin did his press conference with the help of an interpreter, but when I collared him down by the boot room here at USM Finch Farm, he agreed to speak to me in English. The Everton supporters love a player who gives 100% for the shirt and shows passion himself, and that's what you're all about, isn't it? Yeah, I will give also uh, everything for, for my shirt, for, for the team, and uh, the Everton fans can can be sure that I will do this. As well as being excited about Saturday, will you be a bit nervous? Will you have some nerves before the game? No, but this is a nice nerves, not a bad nerves. Um, yeah, as I said, I want to, I want to be on the pitch and uh, shoot some goals <laughs> in the game. <laughs> We'd love to see that. Yeah, I hope so. How have you settled in here, Jing? Very nice. Uh, all the all the guys are really, really nice to me. Really warm to me. And uh, it was like it was so easy to settle in here. You were the new boy for a day or so. Now we have another new boy, Theo Walcott. 
he's another good signing for the football club. Yeah, yeah, very good signing. Um, great for our team. Great for me because uh, he's up front a really good player. And uh, I hope so uh, that he that he uh, gonna make some assists for me. Are you enjoying training and playing alongside Wayne Rooney? Yeah, yeah, he's a great character. He's a great player. He helps me a lot. Um, is is a big honor to play with him. Wayne Rooney, born and bred in the city of Liverpool. He speaks with a Scouse accent, yeah. a local accent. Can you understand him? No, I I <laughs> I, I told him to 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 talk a little bit slower with me, and he's doing this good. But your English is very good. Good, but it will be better, I hope, in uh, six months. <laughs> Andy Spence, manager of Everton Ladies, welcome to the Everton Show. Your season, in some ways, Andy, has mirrored that of the first team. A bit of an indifferent start, largely due to a difficult fixture list, and things have picked up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we saw the fixtures um, come out, you know, we... We knew we were facing probably four of the top five from um, the previous season, so it was always going to be difficult. As you say, we've had the transition from going part-time to full-time as well. Um, you know, having players who were used to juggling full-time jobs or university, then football at the the end of the day, if if you like, to then you know becoming full-time, and and that in itself has has been a real um, good process in many respects because the players have adjusted to that, and then yeah, you know. <laughs> In the kind of way, it was good to face the teams we did. Although the results, as you say, didn't go our way, I think the confidence we took from facing, you know, some of the real established sides in the league um, really set us up. And as you say, then you know we got a good run of games: uh, Yeovil and Sunderland and Birmingham, where we picked up some real good results, and and we started to show all all those good qualities that I know we've got. We see it on a daily basis here at USM Finch Farm, and. And it's been great to take that into the into the games themselves, and um, we we feel we're on track. A little bit of a blip, I have to say, um, after Christmas against Bristol. But apart from that, I've been really pleased with the progress we've been making. Andy, do you know going full time? Have you noticed a difference in the girls' attitude in training every day to when you were part time? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, you know the living and breathing football now, which is as you know yourself, is it's a. It's a big thing, you know, you've got to do the right things here at the training ground, but also away mm. and, and make sure preparations and how they look after themselves are right. And just getting the players more contact, you know, because the reality is uh, the vast majority of our girls have come from a, a junior setup where they probably trained only two, three hours a week. Mm. So we're almost trying to upskill them with a lot of those, if you like, even foundations to the games and, you know, tactical side of the game and uh, obviously up upskilling them in terms of the physical outputs that we're, we're now getting and now seeing we're in a, a real good place and the full-time model's been brilliant and to be fair internally the club support has been incredible you know from all departments but particularly you know someone like Dave Unsworth has mm. become such a big champion for us and you know for myself personally is, is someone I can go to on a daily basis for advice and support about you know because at the end of the day this is my first full season as a full-time manager as well you know but um, it's exciting times and, and certainly going full time is a, is a big deal for us as a club and it's nice to you know get that support off everyone. Where are we at with the profile of women's football Andy because obviously Rachel Brown good friend of ours former Everton goalkeeper she's on national television now doing punditry work for, for BT on a Saturday afternoon it all helps doesn't it? Yeah absolutely and it's that type of credibility as you say the likes of Rachel and, and some of the other if you like former players across the game have have gone into you know the men's football report and things like that and that's important because listen the women's games come a long way in a short space of time and mm. um, the full-time model has, has allowed us to get more coverage and more um, people interested within the game and there's still you know a way to go with that but certainly um, you know having good people like Rachel you know showing uh, knowledge and understanding of the game on a you know big platform as you say on a, a Saturday afternoon most afternoons is, is great and um, we had her back at the training ground recently and I think even she commented on how far we've we've come you know since even she retired three years ago so those things are important to us. And Phil Neville linked with the mm. England ladies job as well. Yeah um, yeah of course you know at this moment it's it's speculation and, and you mm. know yourself with speculation you're never quite sure until it happens but listen you know we're I'm certainly going to be supporting Phil Neville being, a, you know, <laughs> our former captain. Um, mm. And so, you know, it'll be interesting because it will, you know, and Phil will probably admit it himself, he hasn't been in the women's game. But listen, football's football mm. at the end of the day. I think what um, Phil will be 
good at, I'm sure, is, is surrounding himself with people who've got experiences of the women's game. Um, you know, obviously our former manager Mo Marley, she's been currently the interim manager, obviously done a great job, um, and I'm sure she, he'd call on the likes of, of Mo, um, who's still going to be working with the younger age groups and, and, get, and get some you know, insight, if you like, to the women's game. And if he ever wants to come and have a coffee with me, I'm sure I can help <laughs> him as well. Just finally, Andy, what are the targets for the rest of the season? When you first came into WSL1 this season, was it survival? Was that the priority? No, I'll be honest, because I felt if we... I didn't want to limit us to being a team who just felt, you know, finishing a couple of places off the bottom end of the table was OK for the first season. You know, we want to set our targets high and we just want to go out and win games of football. And as you said, as we've touched on already, is, is get that experience into our young players. And we just want to go out, enjoy our football, as I say, and, and really push on. Um, as I say, if we can add a couple of players now to in the window, great. If not, um, it would be about getting those experiences in and... Um, if we f reflect really what we've done first half of the season, then I think we'll be in a good place come May. Good luck for the rest of the season to Andy yeah. and the girls. And that's just about it for this week's Everton Show. My thanks to Snods and to Andy Spence for joining us. Thanks to you for watching. Please do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton Show. You've been watching the Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.